Hey, y'all. Look at the weird sunlight in here. Yeah, weird. It's bouncing off the floor. What the fuck? It's like all over your... That shit looks sexy. It looks like I'm, <laughs> like I'm having sex with a, some kind of orb. Some energy <laughs> orb. I'm like, I got you now. I was going to say, you're yeah. going to start thrusting now? Yeah, yeah. Some weird shit. Oh my god, the show just came on and he's already thrusting it. orbs. already doing fucking crazy <laughs> shit. So, I got shorts on too. Yeah. So, we, uh... This, this, we saw, we, we've been on this fucking um, Charles Bronson kick because they're showing free ones on you on uh, YouTube. Yeah. This is on Tubi for free, too. Yeah. They're worth seeing. They're good. They got good ones up there. They got one, I think it's called The uh, the Assassination. I think it's the other one that they just put up. I have to check it again. It's either The Assassin or Assassination. Um, so this one came up, Mr. Majestic. It's good. Um, I wouldn't say it's quite as good as as uh, the, mach- the, the mechanic. mechanic. But they're very different kind of movies. The, the mechanic is kind of weird and dark. This one, not so much. It's kind of just like a... Uh, it's kind of a neo-Western. And... Uh, like Charlie plays... Uh, I'm going to call him Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Char- me, me and Charlie, we're tight. Yeah, me and Charlie. Like, <laughs> Charlie. Charlie plays basically Rambo. A dude that was decorated. You find out later, you know, so how's this dude doing all this badass shit? He's just a watermelon farmer. Uh, it turns out he's like a Vietnam War veteran and escaped captivity and did a bunch of shit. Um, and it's also a little bit like John Wick. He's just trying to get the damn watermelon. I'm just trying to pick my trying melons, you guys. God pick. damn it. Starts off, <laughs> he's driving around in his truck and, uh, he sees uh, a bunch of migrant workers. I'm presuming they're from Mexico, or they're yeah. from somewhere south of the border, and uh, they're they're at the gas station trying to trying to use the restroom. One of them's this uh, hot looking uh, Mexican chick, Nancy, and, I think. Yeah, she's probably about forty, uh, but she looks a lot younger. And the uh, the gas station attendant won't let him in to use the restroom, and and Bronson's like, well, what the fuck? Why don't you just let him in? He goes, man. Every time they go in there to make a mess, I don't know who these people are, that kind of shit, you know. They just go in there and the whole yeah. family goes in and they take showers and blah, blah, yeah, blah. they take showers and make a mess <laughs> and fucking, you know. And, and, and this is my gas station. I don't want to clean it up. So Bronson fucking, he puts up with it for a few minutes and then he goes, what the fuck do you care? It's not your gas station. Let him in. Let the girl fucking pee. Because <laughs> that's what it is. He I mean, must, he didn't say it. That'd been funny if he said that. Though. Basically, it's what he should have said. <laughs> if they had me writing the dialogue, I'd have had that. <laughs> so he roughs the dude up, and fucking makes him go in there. Which kind of the girl kind of thanks him for it. Well, uh, he gives him a ride in, into town. Uh, well, he gives him a ride back to where they were living, wasn't it? Or was it just he, he wanted to show him he needed these watermelons picked? Yeah. And they were looking for work because that's what they did. They they picked fruit. What you doing, poop? <laughs> so he takes them back to his farm, and when he gets there, they got dudes out there picking picking for, uh, watermelons already. And he stops and wait, well, what the fuck is this? He's like, I doing? just went to get a crew. Yeah, yeah, who the what? fuck are you? Who are you picking who, my watermelons? You? And they got some dude trying to muscle his way in, and he's just some two bit cowboy and fucking old fake fifties looking cowboy outfit. I was like, and nice he's going, Tom who are all cosplay. these winos and shit? You know? <laughs> and he got them from the fucking halfway house or the fucking drunk bin or something. You know, they're all these winos. Who are all these winos? I need professionals, you know, professional fruit pickers. And he gets in a big fucking fight. And, 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 well, the two bit cowboys, like, you know, what are you doing siding with these Latins, man? These are white people. I got them out of the damn drunk tank. Let them fucking pick it. <laughs> They're drunk ass white yeah, people that don't know how to said. pick watermelons. But... Yeah, let, let them pick it. He's trying to muscle his way in. He's fucking demanding payment and shit. And uh, shit goes too far, and fucking, fucking Charlie beats his ass. Fucking hits him in the fucking. They pull it, a gun in the nutsack, on. Right, yeah. right with the butt of a yeah. shotgun. Because oh, they I was pull like, a shotgun Damn. on him, and fucking Pet-pet Charlie down. takes a shotgun, fucking hits oh, a dude no. in the nuts with it, fucking, ah. and then he gives the shotgun <laughs> back, fucking gives, puts it in the trunk, and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so he as, thought it was all Charles cool, Bronson you know does. what I mean? And the Mexicans start fucking picking. They're like, all right, we got to, we're working for a good dude. So he's out there for only a couple hours, and the cops show up, and they arrest his ass. Because, of course, the little whiny cowboy. Dude fucking, dude fucking ratted him out. He hit my nose yeah. with a gun. See, so he gets locked up. And uh, he's begging him. He says, look, man, I got to get these fucking watermelons picked. Fucking 
Yeah, I'll, they'll go yeah. rotten, and it's like right. that's his whole like that's his year's yeah. crop, you know. Let me out on my own recognizance. Basically, I'll come back for for uh, I'll come back for trial and everything. And fuck, like, if you lock me up, you lock me up. But at least I'll get the watermelons out. And uh, what they end up doing is. Um, can't remember exactly how it was. Well, he they goes. In, let him out. They, they he said, goes into the into yeah. the holding cell. They wanted and to then, kind of deal with him. Well, he goes into the yeah. holding cell. What happens? That's right. And that's he right. gets on the wrong side of this really uh, this gangster with like anger issues. Yeah, he's an actor too, isn't he? He's an actor and a gangster, I think, wasn't he? No, I think the I think the joke about that was he was thought that it looked like. Somebody that was like on TV. Uh, okay, okay, is this what it was? Because right. then remember after like after he got right. Uh, right. arrested again or whatever, he was like, oh, I guess he's a TV star yeah. now. Ha ha ha. You know what I mean? So, so he gets in a fight with his badass while he's in fucking basically the the town jail, and turns out this guy's an assassin, and fucking um, they lock him up, put him in the the, the damn um, bus to take him to central lockup, and just out of the blue, this assassin's fucking. His, his team yeah. fucking hijack the truck, shoot up a bunch of cops, and try to get him out of the damn truck to get to to recapture him before he goes into central lockup. And um, fucking Charlie sees his fucking the, he's chained the the the, uh, the assassin can't get out of the bus. Everybody else can leave, but they got the assassin because he's high risk. They got him handcuffed to the to, to the, the seat to the seat. <clears throat> well, Charlie sees his fucking chance, and he goes, "Fuck it, I'm taking off with this dude." You know what I mean? <laughs> so he steals the prisoner, all right, and fucking starts roughing him up. He gets him out in the country, starts roughing him up. Says, "Walk." They walk to a dam across the. It's his hunting cabin. Yeah, it's in I his hunt. Yeah. Take him to his hunting cabin way up in the mountains in California. It's Colorado, actually. Col is it Colorado? Because yeah. it looked like California. I think it's it Colorado. Like... No, it's Colorado. They it's shot it in California. That's what I'm saying. I'm it, looking no, at... they shot it in Colorado. Okay. And it's supposed to be it's supposed in Colorado. supposed to be in California. Okay. No, it's supposed to be in Colorado. It's all in Colorado. Really? Because yeah. it looked like California. No, it's and... Colorado. All right. And, it, and, okay. I'm going to let Jenny fucking handle that part. But to me, it's California. I don't care what, what, what the movie says. I'm looking at it. It looks like no, California. No, they shot it. In Colorado. Okay. It's Colorado. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> so, so anyway, he uh, he uh, eventually calls back the cops, and it, a bunch of cool shit happens during all this time. He says, "Look, I got this high value prisoner. I'll give him back to you if you if you drop the charges on me. You know, it's just like a simple assault charge anyway. It yeah. wasn't really a big deal. And they they wanted to negotiate." But the assassin's like, is like, look, man, I'll give you twenty thousand dollars if you just let me go. He goes, I'll even call somebody and fucking they'll come bring the money, you know. Uh, nah, it didn't work out that way. He kind of betrayed that dude. And it goes into this big old thing, and finally, finally, the the bad guy escapes, doesn't he? Yeah. And and, and um, Charlie gets ba thrown back into custody. And they were going to put him in jail, but the cops are like, look, this dude's trying to kill you for what you did to him. He wants vengeance. So we're going to let you go and use you as bait. Okay. Because he's going to come back to kill you. And when he does, we're going to we're gonna capture him. So he goes back to the farm and he's trying to get the damn, be good to the workers and get them paid. And get the damn watermelons picked. And the assassin comes back with his team, and they fuck up all the damn watermelons, and they fucking run a dude over while he's taking a piss in the damn portage potty. They fucking beat everybody up. They fucking capture people. Oh, they do all kinds of bad shit. <laughs> Cops are nowhere to be seen. Dude's on his own. So he has to go Rambo on his own throughout the movie to try to take care of all these gangsters and protect these uh, migrant workers that he's got. And it's good. It's, it's real good. Um... I am glad that uh, yeah. that Charles Bronson called out the cops later on. Yeah. Because he's like, bitches, you know, I thought this whole thing was you were going to, like, use me for bait, and I'm yeah. on my goddamn farm. And he's like, so this gangster and this and the original Tom Mix cowboy yeah. cosplay dude with the yeah. big bulbous forehead, yeah. they're, like, all out there. He's, like, fucking up my shit, like, you know, running over one of the deputies who was in a porta potty yeah. like, you know, beating up all the workers and all this other yeah. kind of shit. Messing up all my watermelons. Trying to rape the girls. Yeah, and then, like, the cops, like, never even show up. And I'm sitting there yeah. thinking, it's making me think that yeah. I think that the cops wanted the hitman to, like, kill Charlie first and then, then swoop in and get Maybe. him. It's hard Just to say. because they're like, hey, we killed two birds with one stone. Maybe. Yeah, but it, 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 it ends up in this big uh, fucking showdown in, 
over at the assassins. For, it was the assassins. Uh, one of his houses, wasn't it? Or was it the boss yeah. of the assassin? He had a big old house up in the up in the mountains. It's pretty good. Now the uh, the bullshit cowboy guy who started the whole thing, who joins up with the he joins up with the assassins to try to help them find Charlie. That dude is being played by the guy who played the crazy biker out of uh, the Omega Man, the guy who was the medical student with all the, who was taking care of the kids. It's that guy. Yeah. Uh, which this is the only other movie I've seen him in. He, he does a good job in the movie, and the guy who plays the bad guy. I think that's the same dude who played the bad guy from that one movie that had Sally Struthers in it when she was like 21, when she was really hot, and fucking he stole her away from that. He he um he would, I forgot the name of this movie. He used um, a gun to fucking hijack a couple, and the guy was significantly older than than uh, than Sally Struthers, probably about 20 years. And he was a real dick to her, and he was making making him drive them around while he was raping the, raping her in the back seat. And over the time, she ended up fucking liking him better than the husband. And then he killed himself. That was just part of it. And then, I uh, can't remember, I don't remember the name of that movie. I gotta find it. It's a Sally Struthers movie. Well, she's a bit part in it, really. It's not, it wasn't a Steve McQueen movie. But mm. you guys will recognize him when you see him. I think it's that same guy. Mustache, curly hair. I'd seen him looking. before. He looks like uh, like Geraldo Rivera yeah. a bit, except considerably wider. Yeah, like Geraldo slightly roided and fucking... Yeah, I was going to say like a hulked out, yeah. slightly hulked out Yeah, Geraldo and, and, and fucking mean, big belly on him. But you still wouldn't be the kind of dude you'd fuck with. Just, Although, gotta say, I he's mean... He's kind of dumb, but he's... Yeah, he's an idiot. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah. he's an idiot because... He just lets, he's just like, I don't even care. I want this dude dead. Yeah, lets his emotions run away with him. Yeah. yeah. And e even after everybody's like, okay, this is like a really stupid idea. And you're just yeah. like getting all your own dudes killed. And you're getting, you know, you're putting your own life at risk because the cops are going to catch you. And he's like, I don't care. I just want that melon farmer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's not, he's not real rational is, is no. what we're saying. Um, but yeah, so a couple people have pointed out that this movie was actually written by the very famous Elmore Leonard. Uh, this was actually, he wrote the novelization of it later, but this was like an original screenplay. Uh, you know, most people know who Elmore Leonard is. Probably his most famous, uh, being Get Shorty, uh, which was really good. He also did Rum Punch, which mm. they made into Jackie Brown. So, yeah, he's written a fuck ton of stuff. This was directed, I thought you would find this interesting, by Richard Fleischer, who did 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Fantastic Voyage, Doctor Doolittle, Tora Tora Tora, Soylent Green, yeah, Conan the Destroyer, yeah, okay. and Red Sonia, yeah, among other things. Been wanting to see Red Sonia again, but man, they want a lot, a lot for it on Blu-ray. Zach said he saw this movie last night. What did he say? I, I could. He could... said uh, the mechanic. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm he gonna... watched the mechanic last night. I love the cinematography. It does that dark, moody '70s lighting. I love so much, and the shot composition was so sexy. <laughs> you saw what I was talking about. Zach saw what I was talking about. They had that gay eye going on. <laughs> the gay eye. They were gay eye on each other. Zach is like, oh, I know what the fuck is that. I know what you I know, I know you saw it, Zach. And Zach, there's no way. There's no way that um, Charles Bronson did not know that that was the subtext in that movie. They just left it unspoken, which I think that was a good artistic. I think that was a good artistic statement. Just let you figure it out of what was going on between them two. Yeah. They, they just let it, let it, they let you interpret it for what it was. Which I, I think that was, a, it, I think it was kind of artistic that way. And it was also market wise, it was a safer decision. Yeah, because like I said, yeah. they absolutely could not get uh, funding for the movie and a lot right. of actors didn't want to be in it if, the, if it had been explicitly. They got around it. Yeah. But that is definitely what that movie says. That's yeah. definitely what that movie says. So, yeah, but, I mean, this one is a lot different. Like you said, this one's almost kind of like more like a neo-Western. Yeah. Um, but and Rambo. With, the one thing about it, though, is and John that, Wick. <laughs> yeah. I just want to pick my melons. Just trying to pick the melons. And the thing, and it's, yeah. I like it because it's kind of like, it is kind of like Rambo in that way where, yeah. you know, Rambo in the first movie, uh, before it turned more into like a cartoon, but... He was just kind of, like, trying to go about his life, you know? He's like, I don't want to... You know, I've been to the war. I've seen all fucked up shit. I don't want to, like, fucking 
deal with it anymore. I just want to have a quiet existence. Yeah. And then people just kept fucking with him and fucking with him and fucking with him. And he finally was like, okay, well, yeah, uh, you got you it. asked for it. He unleashed the beast. <laughs> And this was kind of like that, too, because honestly, they didn't really make a big deal of Charles Bronson's character, Mr. Majestic. His first name was Vince, although I don't think they ever called yeah. him that. They just called him Majestic. Yeah. Um, so I don't even think they brought up the fact that he had been a POW or that he was any kind of like badass anything. Well, the cops brought it up. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I, I. what I was going to say, if you'd All let right. me finish oh, the okay. sentence, oh, okay. yeah, I'm was fine. that... Yeah. <laughs> This is what happens when you just when you don't let me finish the sentence. <laughs> what I was going to say was that they don't bring it up until the, about the halfway point of the movie. Which yeah, yeah, was what I was going to say. Yeah, that's, so, that's, that made it better. So yeah, and so that's what I like about it. So like yeah. at the beginning, you're just thinking this is a farmer. Yeah, how does he do this? Yeah. Like how is he doing all this stuff? Yeah. One thing that kind of like annoyed me though, well, I, it didn't annoy me, but I'm just saying the character annoyed me, but he's supposed to, is the the cowboy dude. Uh, what was his name? Copus. I Copus. So. I think it's a. And he came, like, in this ridiculous, like, outfit that he was wearing that I'm sure he thought looked really... Like, my mom made it for me. I he was know. trying to be, like, a stereotype. He was trying to be a cowboy. But, yeah. But he was dressed like a... Dad. It looked like a costume. Like a cowboy costume. God, yeah. Like your mom would make you for yeah. Halloween. Not quite that bad. Not as bad as, like, Joe Don Baker in costume. Final Justice. It was a gay cowboy shirt. It, yeah, a little bit. That's like, what you'd like if you yeah, yeah, if you'd got... If you, if you were a midnight cowboy... Yeah, yeah. And you went to New York City and, like, were down on the strip, like, hustling... Yeah. That's, like, what you would wear if Selling that was booty. your shtick. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's your, that's your it booty It was that selling. kind that's of That's your thing. booty selling cowboy outfit. Yeah. So I was kind of confused at first because, you know, Charles Bronson, he goes... <laughs> He goes and picks up his crew for the day, you know, uh, and brings them back in the bus. And then there's all these dudes already working in there. And he's like, who the fuck are all these people? And then, like, the cowboy dude is sitting there going, yeah, I already brought you a crew. I'm just like, who the fuck are you? Like, what are you even doing here? just muscling in. Yeah, and that's the thing. And uh, so Charles Bronson, he didn't know who he was either. Huh. He just, like, some bitch just showed up. Yeah. I guess he was just some. Well, he was hooked in. What he was hooked up with. He the was other some kind of gangster type of thing. Yeah. He knew who the other contractors were. Remember? Yeah. Because he was scaring them off later. I guess he was so trying. He's had, trying to run like a protection racket. Yeah, yeah. Is so he had doing. found out through the other contractors that there was job that he was looking for a job, and he muscled in on it. Okay. Remember, because he says I'm looking for somebody. Yeah. You know. So the other contractors were probably going to do it, but he muscled those guys out and put his own dudes in from behind the scenes. Yeah, because I thought mm. it had something to do with, like, maybe some of the other farmers didn't like that maybe he paid a little bit more, like the workers, or yeah. something. I don't really know what was going on. But, yeah, so this guy just kind of, like, shows up, and how weird would that be if you just, like, showed up at your farm and, like, well, some, ra some random-ass dude is like, hey. Show I he showed up with a bunch of bombs. Yeah. <laughs> But they were white bombs. Yeah, yeah. That was his. That was his. That was his. That was his fucking selling point. These are white. These are white. <laughs> These are white. Ergo, they are automatically better <laughs> than whoever he brings. Well, he's back. trying to play on fucking race. It's like, don't yeah. side with these Latins. You're white. You need to give the money to these white guys. Right. That's what he was trying to do. It didn't work. Even though he brought them, like, like you said, from the drunk tank. Yeah, they weren't. They, and, he, and even and even Charles Bronson said that. Yeah, Bronson like, says, I need trained people. Winos? He says, yeah, these winos, I need trained people, you know, that know how to do this. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 you're going to take these bombs. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to like it. Yeah, basically. But it was, like, pretty funny. But honestly, yeah. I laughed my ass off when he when he snatched that gun away from that dude and, like, just got him right there. Well, because he kind of pushed him over the hood of the car yeah. and his legs kind of went like that and he just went, wham, like, yeah. right into the fucking dude's yeah. crotch. And I was like, yeah. excellent. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I had seen this movie um, probably once or twice when I was a kid. I feel like it was, was Louie brought it up earlier that it was on cable, like, every weekend. I feel like it was. It was always on. Not necessarily even the pay channels. I feel like it was on, like, USA Network or some shit like, or TBS or some shit like that. I feel like it was just, like, on a lot. So I think I saw it a couple of times back then. But I, honestly, I didn't really remember hardly anything about it. So it was kind of cool seeing it again. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't like it as much as the mechanic. But like you mentioned, it's two really kind of completely different. They're both sort of nominally action movies, but not they're not really the same. Like, not really. Not tonally the same. So, I don't know. But it was still really good, though. I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed, uh... 
Well, I kind of liked it because Charles Bronson's character was just so... Like, he didn't make a, a show of, like, being a badass or anything, like I said. He was just trying to be a farmer and just trying to get his fucking crop picked for the year. And that's kind of all he was worrying about. And then, like, all these people kept fucking with him. And he was just kind of, like, bemused about the whole thing. And I found that very funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, and some of the lines he said. He just never got rattled or anything like that. Because I think, like, the when he was in the... Uh, in the holding tank, like with that other gangster, like yeah, when they, he pushed, yeah. yeah, he's like, "Hey, you gonna eat that sausage?" And the guy, because like I said, he has anger issues. He could have just given him the sausage, and none of this movie would have happened. Yeah. But no, he had to push the tray off on the floor like a fucking toddler. And say, "Help yourself." Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, if you know, if you're not gonna eat the sausage, like nobody can have the sausage." Okay, I see how you yeah. are. But he didn't like, you know, he didn't say anything mean to him or anything. He was just like, oh, okay, I see. No. That's well, right. that's because like, he had been in, in a Vietnamese prisoner war camp, so yeah. there was nothing that could happen to him that would in jail. <laughs> yeah. that, or, he's just like, he's whatever, like, oh, prison? man. That's prison? That's not prison. <laughs> yeah. That's just a place where you sleep. Yeah. You know? So, you know, he wasn't even worried about going to jail. Yeah. Mm. And, but, you know. It's a good movie, though. It's a good movie. It's good. I really liked that scene yeah. too, where uh, you know he stopped at like a like a convenience store or something, right? When he was trying to like make a deal with the cops after he yeah. had kidnapped the the gangster, and then he didn't have any change, so he asked the girl, like the lady that was running the convenience he store, ask like, for free shit. Ask it. Well, he's like, "Can I please like use the phone?" And blah blah blah. Yeah. And then um, so she's like, "Yeah, that's fine," like because he didn't have fifty cents or whatever. And so he uses the phone a couple times, and he's like, hey, can I have a couple beers, too? And she's like, yeah, go on. And I was just kind of like, is he seriously, like, asking for free shit? But then, like, later, she he, uh, he sent the gangster's girlfriend back to pay, to pay her, like, $3.85 yeah. or however much it was. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, that's awesome. Yeah. He made her go he yeah. made her go by and she said, What? Some guy told me to come by here and give you three dollars and eighty five cents. Yep. That's how much the beers of the phone call. He were. told her he only told her he told her he was gonna pay her. Yeah, I thought that was like fucking yeah. funny. Uh but yeah, I just really, really liked his character in this. He was just so un good. he was so unflappable. Yeah. And I just thought that was like super funny. Well that was well that was Charles Bronson's thing, I guess. Yeah. Is that you know Yeah, I don't know it, if I've ever seen no. Charles Bronson like have a fucking meltdown. No. He's not a meltdown type of dude. No, no he's, you, you just go silent. He's kind of a more like uh, steely, yeah. I'm gonna kill your ass type yeah. of. Which yeah, you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not one of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, kind of. Although that would be kind of funny to see. I don't know. He was in so many movies. I don't know if he did that. In Definitely, you can see that he's the prototype for uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, uh, fucking. Um, Dude who played Ram Stallone, um, you know he he's he's a he, he's a prototype action star. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of the '80s guys were pro were were going to be based on this. Yeah, I see it. But also Steve McQueen, he's just one of them. But he, he, he does good. He's good. Tyler says this has to be the best watermelon movie of all time. Yeah. Name a better watermelon movie. Yeah. Can't be done. There's a scene where they come in there with uh, Smith and Wesson MK 760s, the bad guys, which is kind of a rare submachine gun. Just story behind those guns, which kind of ties into the Vietnam, the Vietnam theme behind this. Anyway, they got the whole damn watermelon, uh, they got the whole watermelon harvest in this damn barn, and the gangsters fucking majestic got away so the only thing the gangsters do is shoot the watermelons with the submachine guns they just fucking unload and like just a bunch of petty ass yeah bitches. destroy a lot of the crap that way the um for a little bit of gun history the uh the smith and wesson mk 760 was a uh an american copy of the carl gustav fucking um, <coughs> submachine gun special forces was using those in vietnam and uh sweden said no nah, we're not going to sell uh, any more weapons to the united states so we had to make our own and smith and wesson made a, a good copy of it called the mk 760 and um special forces u.s special forces carried them for a while this was during a time when u.s advisors were down there and it was all unofficial they couldn't carry an american issue military weapon they had to they were disguised as civilian mercenaries, is what they were disguised as. So you need an alternate weapon for that. And they still do that today. Nowadays they'd use contractors, but special forces also impersonates contractors. They'll, they'll, they'll impersonate foreign troops 
if they have to. So they just do whatever. They'll, they'll impersonate the enemy, which back in World War II, they get you hung or hanged. But, uh, yeah, if it's a person, it's hanged. Hanged, yeah. That's the only time you ever. I don't know. This is a, I don't know why, but. I mean, ask Zach. There's some dudes out there that are hung. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know I'm coming at you sideways like that, Zach. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean. You mean like well, I mean when you're hanging a person, okay. like to execute yeah. them. That's right. the only time that you would use hanged as the yeah. past tense. Yeah. Every other time it's hung. I don't know why. I don't know who made up that rule. But that's what the rule is. Yeah. Uh, Camp Guy said, I noticed the phone booths in Gator. I just watched after the podcast. And yes, that's the Georgia flag and Capitol building in the opening scene. Yeah, yeah I yeah. thought that was Georgia. Yeah. Um, Slasher Fred says, Charles Bronson was also in the Western classic Once Upon a Time in the West. Yes, he was. Uh, Dom the Bomb recommends Hard Times, 1975, with Charles Bronson, which we will probably get around to. Yeah. Sergio Leone originally wanted Charles Bronson for the Man With No Name trilogy, but got Clint Eastwood in the end. Yeah. So, Cam Guy, how'd you like the Gator series? Did you see uh, White Lightning also? White Lightning? Yeah. I think it's a good little series. <laughs> you doing, Pookie? Pookie's laying on her back with her hands up like that. Is she really? Now she's stretching. Oh, okay. She's, yeah. like, she's like, I'm being cute and you guys are yeah. missing it. <laughs> You're like, I'm not even Since he's watching it now, he must be watching White Lightning now. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're free on YouTube. Yeah, I'm like I'm. I always forget because we have so many streaming services. Yeah. Um, you know nowadays, like with the even pay ones, we have Netflix, we have Shutter, we have Hulu, and Amazon Prime, and then you have the free ones. We have Tubi, Tubi, we have uh, Peacock, we have Sling, and I have all these different ones. And I always forget that YouTube also has free movies yeah. that you can watch. All these, all these seventies movies uh, and, and the early eighty ones, eighties uh, ones, so they aged really well. I liked them. Uh, now, Zach was saying that that it wasn't until the 80s, I think he said. He says you could tell how it wasn't really until the 80s where action became kind of like a smooth genre. Before that, it was kind of kind of, uh, kind of crappy looking. 70s action was um, all practical in-camera effects. You know, If you were going to do a stunt, somebody had to actually do it. So the shit was pretty fucking dangerous. And a lot of times you couldn't get a, a Hollywood studio to, to, to underwrite that shit just because of the risks involved. So it was a lot of times it was smaller uh, independent uh, studios would risk it. And, you know, the end result was actually a lot better than what the studios were doing most of the time. And that's where a lot of fucking these crazy ass stuntmen came from, especially the Australian ones one of the, out of the Mad Max series. Some of those dudes were really getting hurt. Some of those accidents that you see in the Mad Max series and in, you know, especially the first two, they weren't really planned to go down that way. They went a lot worse than they'd planned, but nobody got killed and they used them. But some of those dudes, like, broke legs and all kinds of shit. You know, Although they I were feel, serious back then. Well, yeah, and I feel like, and I think a lot of stuntmen have this, stunt people have this, is yeah. that... If you had, a, if you did a stunt and it went wrong and you broke a bone or something, most of them will be like, "Oh, totally use it." Yeah, because I broke a bone for nothing. Because I broke, yeah, yeah, I yeah. broke a bone for that shit. You better yeah. use that. Tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slow motion captures of fucking motorcycles, fucking just wrapping up and rolling over guys as they're sliding across the ground. You know, and I've had that kind of shit happen to me in real life. <laughs> First one nearly killed me. It happens fast. It just—it's like you're looking through a camera that's spinning or shaking. You—you you don't, you don't really feel anything. It's just—it's happening too fast. So then, when everything slows down, you go, "Oh fuck!" and you're just numb everywhere. Yeah, you'll feel it later. You feel though. it later. <laughs> so of course you're like, "Use it, print it. Did it get? Was it good? Was it good? Yeah, okay, lay, lay me up in the back of the truck. Get me out of here." <laughs> That, you know. Gramther says Southern Comfort is free on YouTube right now. Yeah, I've heard about that one. Uh, I should probably rewatch that. I feel uh, like I saw that as that, a. That's Burt Reynolds, isn't it? Is that Burt Reynolds? Wait, is he in that? I didn't think he was in that, but I, could, that? I, I don't remember. Sounds familiar. Bees Drive-In says, Jenny, I sent you some stuff from Mexico today. You will get it on Friday. Well, thank you very much. Cool. I, hope for, I will look out for that. <clears throat> So, uh, that all we have to say yeah, about that's Mr. All Majestic? Okay, so yeah. it's Tuesday today, right? Okay, so tomorrow is the regular show. And the show we're going to do tomorrow, I'm excited about this one. We're doing Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Okay, yeah. I'm calling it Gentlemen of Horror. All right. 
So that should be fun, like yeah, talking evid about. Evidently, these guys have fucking wild backgrounds, especially Christopher Lee. I mean, yeah, Christopher yeah. Lee. I was reading his Wikipedia page, and I was yeah. like, "Holy fucking shit!" It's like it yeah. almost seems like Peter Cushing has more of kind of like a traditional actor background. Christopher Lee more like James Bond. sounds yeah. like somebody that yeah. you would make up. Yeah, like you know what I mean. <laughs> like yeah. in a like if you read it, that in a book, you'd be like, "Come on now!" Yeah. But he like really did do all that shit. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. All right, so gotta shut it down. All right, so uh, we will see you guys tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thanks for hanging out with us today, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.